Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video we're going to take a look at some dependency injection methods in the .NET built-in IOC container that you probably don't know about and you almost definitely not use, especially one of them. I wouldn't be surprised if 95% of everyone out there doesn't know how exactly it works and why you probably want to use it. In this video, we're going to recap all the methods in which you can actually register a service and what limitations and what rules you have around those methods. If you like the content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe or ring the notification bell. And for more training, check out nickchapsas.com. And what a coincidence, because I just happened to have a four and a half hour course at nickchapsas.com all about dependency injection, where I take you through literally everything i mean this is the best dependency injection content you're gonna find anywhere so in case you want to grab that i'm gonna give you a 20 percent discount code for the first 50 of you who buy the course use code depths what you see now on your screen or the link in the description to buy the course if you want it all right so let me show you what i have here this is a simple api which has this example controller nothing fancy and then we have a few services here and this just has a single interface and then a couple of implementations of the same interface Pretty basic stuff. And we're going to use all of these services as the foundation for what I'm going to explain in this video. So let's say, let's start straight away. Let's say I want to register um, iService to resolve to service one in a singleton fashion. Well, I have a few ways to do that. The simplest one is I can say builder.services.add singleton, as you probably know, and say iService and then resolve that to service one. And then if I am to inject it here, I can simply do private read only i service and that will resolve that service. What I'm going to do just so we know exactly what we're resolving and how, I'm just going to say get type and then name and I'm going to fire up postman and hit that endpoint. All right, so if I run this API now real quick and call that endpoint over here, then as you can see, service one makes sense exactly what we registered now what i want to do is i want to show you what happens if i go ahead and duplicate this line but instead of adding the service one as an implementation i'm also going to add the service two do you know what's going to happen here so what's going to happen here is and let me show you let me just debug this api and go back here so this will now return service two which kind of makes you think that by doing that, the second one overrides the first one, but it's a bit more nuanced than that. If you do that and then you try to resolve an individual service, then yes, the second registered or the last registered service is what will be resolved as an implementation. But if you go here and you say, I enumerable of I service and you try to resolve that and let's quickly do one of those where we do a select and we return um, an enumerable and I debug this now, then as you can see, both services are registered. It's just that when you resolve an individual one, only the second one or only the last one will be resolved. So keep that in mind. And why should you? Well, when other people register code in their own extension methods, when you have like add something or add something else, these services might inject things and might register things that you also might go ahead and register. And if you have a different implementation, you can have problems in the behavior. So what some people try to do is to be on the safe side, instead of using the add version of the methods, and by the way, singleton is just one of them, you have uh, add uh, transient and add scoped as well. And you also have the raw add method, which let me just quickly show you. Um, all of that registration in based on the concept of a service descriptor, which is a class describing how this service is supposed to be registered. So if I say descriptor equals new service descriptor, not collection, descriptor, then I can specify the type of my service. And remember, service is where you're starting, implementation is where you're going. Then I can also specify that I want this to be implemented in the type of service one in singleton fashion and if i do all that then i can go ahead and say builder.services.add and do this and this is usually very uh, good if you want to do any programmatic registration because you can pass the type without having the generic value so this is actually used extensively by libraries as well now all of these add methods work the same however we also had builder.services.try add scoped singleton transient Let's leave enumerable outside for now. That's a bit different. We're going to talk about it. Uh, but then the rest are effectively the same. So you might say 
try add singleton and I can copy the same behavior and I can take that. I'm going to comment this out uh, and then register this and run it and then go here, call it. And as you can see, only one service, the service I registered is here. However, here's what happens if I duplicate this again and I say service two with the try add singleton, not the add singleton. If I do that now, then as you can see, only the first one is registered. The second was not registered because a service type of the same type was found to be registered. And even though my implementation is different, it wouldn't allow me to add anything on top of it. So when you use the try methods, try add singleton and so on, then you will not accidentally add on top of something that is already registered, minimizing the risk for unintended behavior. And you don't have to worry about multiple registrations. Now, if you want to have multiple registrations, then you should go back and use that instead. Now, something I forgot to point out as well is that let's just comment this try and go back to the simple add. If I go back to the simple add methods and I try to add the same service with the same implementation twice, then what happens is that you can. You can have multiple registrations of the same service, meaning now you have two independent singletons, which makes them less of a singleton. I mean, within their context, it's still a singleton, but it's no longer a singleton effectively. So keep that in mind. Add with multiple calls on the same service will still add individual services, risking singletons because they're no longer singletons. While this is something that would not happen with the try methods, even if the service is the same, I can go ahead, run this, call it. And then again, only the first one because the check is here. So basically no check here and then check here. But here's where the method you probably have never heard of or have never used comes into picture. And that method is the builder.services.tryAdd enumerable. Now, what do you think this method is supposed to do? Because you might say, oh, I can just pass a list of descriptors. And, you know, if I have a couple of those, service one and service two for descriptor uh, two, and then I can go ahead here and provide some form of array or enumerable and then pass the two down. And that kind of tells you, yeah, you know, this compiles, this is fine. And if I register that, these services will be both registered. But this is not the only overload you have there. In fact, you can have an overload that only accepts one, even though it's enumerable, which is weird in itself, because I think many people miss this method because it behaves differently than the try add singleton scope, whatever methods, which shouldn't because the name implies otherwise, but I digress. So you need to know about this one. What this will do, and let's just to prove that this actually works fine, I'm going to just register the first one. I'm just going to say try add enumerable and then call that. And as you can see, service one is registered. Now, if I go back and I show you the same example as this one, where I try to register two services, but of a different implementation. So in this case, service two is the implementation of the descriptor two. Then if I do that, as you can see, it works. However, if I try to do it again for the third time and register first, second and second again, then it won't do that. So the way this is different than this is that the uniqueness in the try add enumerable method is based on the combination of service type and implementation type. While in the try add singleton transient scope or the, the row one, the uniqueness check is on the service itself, making it a very safe thing to use if you care about the uniqueness of the pair. So keep that in mind because you cannot really achieve that with any other uh, method unless you write one. So to quickly recap, let me just uncomment everything and reorganize them a bit just to understand what everything means. All right. So first, the add methods, the add methods, add singleton, add transient, add scope and add in itself will register the service, no matter its implementation type, even if it's the same multiple times. In most cases, it's fine and it's what we use most of the time. However, you should be careful when you write library code or code other people will use because this could cause problems if overridden by a consumer. The try add methods, except for the enumerable, so try add singleton, try add scope, try add transient and try add in itself, will only check for the uniqueness on the service. So 
even if you try to add a service with a different implementation, so service two here, not service one, then this will not be allowed because it says, oh, well, I have a nice service already. I won't accept another one. Thank you very much. No matter the service implementation. And then the try add enumerable, which is the odd one out, will allow you to register the service as long as it doesn't have one in the container with both this service type and this implementation type. So this would be registered, this would be registered, this would not be registered because this one is already in here with this service type and this implementation type. And I should point out here that this behavior is also lifetime agnostic, meaning that if I had the same service twice over here, but with transient and let's say uh, descriptor to T, and I try to register that on top of the previous one, which is a singleton, then it doesn't matter that the lifetime is different. When I call this, it still only registers the two, meaning that you can have any lifetime you want, but as long as the service type and the implementation type already exist, you cannot re-register them with this method. So keep all that in mind. This will change the way you write code if you're using IOC heavily and you're doing some interesting stuff with it, and you can learn how to do interesting stuff if you check out my course. So I hope you understood everything here because there's quite a lot at play and this relationship between these triad methods of singleton, transient scope and enumerable can be confusing because in my opinion, it implies one thing, but it works in a different way. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making this video possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.